Hey everyone, before we dive right into the action, I just wanted to let you know that all the opening theory used in this series can be found in my latest London system course, will be the first link in the description. Alright, getting a wide game, gonna be trying out uh, the London system and gonna be using the best move order in my opinion with uh, knight f3 on the second move, get the bishop out to f4, let's see, opponent started with an early e6, locking the bishop in, gonna be going e3. And we see that we transpose now into the Chigorin defense when they are playing with a bishop inside the pawn chain. So this could have also started by uh, knight c6, bishop f4, knight f6, e3, and then e6. And this is covered in the course. And now after they play knight c6, it's basically no longer bishop b5 and try to exploit the knight as we generally do in the Chigorin when this guy is outside the pawn chain, like this, or when they play with bishop g4. But we'll have to play it in like the typical London fashion, meaning that the bishop goes to d3. But first, you gotta make sure that there's no knight b4 annoying move, so. Create a square for the bishop, develop to d3. Plays h6, I think maybe could potentially throw in g5, we don't really mind that, just step back. Yeah, a6, again, two moves that are really inferior because they are not uh, influencing the center. I have to say this is not included in the course, but the general idea will be to break with either e4 or focus on the knight e5 plan. Both uh, would be definitely very doable. I'll just play knight e2 first and <clears throat> maybe just knight e5 on the next move. So we'll do knight e5 right away. Could start with castle as well. I think we're just going to be castling, allowing opponent to take on f4 because we both know that black will take here most of the times. Even if they don't, we will most likely play knight e5 on the next move anyways. Yeah, okay, he ends up taking, now expecting castling short and we get to centralize the knight. In case they take, we can take back and repair the pawn structure. And now the key plan to make progress now is to launch the f pawn. Break with f5, okay, no need to rush with it, but that's something you should definitely keep an eye on. So, opponent plays f6, I think we have a lot of good options, we can take, for sure, I think that's doable. We can play maybe something like queen h5, which also seems reasonable, but then maybe it gets to close it with f5 and then we'll have to break with g4. Mm, I think taking is... Kind of good now, just so we can focus on the backward pawn. But also, I think I want to show you how to play in case they go f5, how to break with g4, and how to use the g file for the attack. I think that's like a pretty instructive theme that we can use. And okay, if he doesn't play f5, then we might force it with a move such as queen g6. Or maybe g4 and then queen g6 something like that if they take we're definitely very happy to open up the file and get to attack on the king side taking with the deep one also interesting but as a rule of thumb i think we just take back towards the center here and yeah i'm not afraid of any like queen g5 moves because there's bishop h7 and i think we just get a get a very good end game honestly you can take trade queens trade rooks and infiltrate when I'm taking his time in case of queen e8, I think we have annoying bishop g6 move. And then could potentially just maybe bring the rook, bring the last piece into the game. No need to rush things here. So kind of hard to play these positions as black mainly because the bishop is just uh, very passive. Our guy on d3 is doing an amazing job putting a lot of pressure against the enemy king. And I would say we have so many simple ideas. Okay, not necessarily after he pushed f6, but in general just pushing f5 or bringing the rook over, like rook e1, rook e3. So bishop d7 with this could be perhaps a reasonable plan for my opponent. I will just uh, bring my rook. I think that's doable. Could also take on h7 maybe. I'm not sure I want to actually that uh, passive knight it's just that i'm trying to evaluate my options before uh, jumping to conclusions but i guess this just looks like a very solid and 
natural move, no need to try to force the issue yet. Just uh, bring the pieces first and then look for uh, alternatives. And okay, opponent goes for bishop b5, trying to trade off the, the bad bishop, which is definitely quite an impressive idea for a 600 rated opponent. But I think perhaps we can maybe now take the knight and play rook f3. And try to say that the bishop is not gonna participate that much into the game. Although, not sure that's actually true. Because if I take 1h7 rook f3, he can maybe lock the position. And on rook g3, there's bishop e8 kicking me out. So, bishop b5, we might have to simply take and play something like a3. Yeah, that looks to be the best play. Could also just do rook f3. And after he takes, I can take back. Yeah, rook f3 also looks pretty tempting to me. Or even rook e3. I think I like rook e3 better. And ideas to swing the rook. And now the strategy kind of changed a bit because on fe, we will no longer go for d stake. Because we are not controlling the f1 square with the rook anymore. But I had in mind to perhaps either take it with a d pawn or take it with like the queen and just focus on this pawn. So on bishop d3, take it with the rook. No ideas to play with uh, rook g3. Not sure why I haven't used the other rook, to be honest. Uh, it was a bit confusing. It felt like both moves were achieving the same thing. But my guess is that mostly I wanted to meet uh, on takes with d, so I have f4 protected by the f1 rook. But now that I'm thinking, I realize that queen e5 is a much better move. Just uh, putting a lot of pressure on the weak pawn and... Now we have deadly ideas such as rook g3 next, which could create a lot of uh, rats against the enemy king. And it might be best for him to close it down, but after rook g3, it already looks like our initiative is pretty dangerous. Not sure if it's like winning, but we definitely have a very promising position. And after f5, mainly because the knight is super passive. And okay, he tries queen e8. I think that's another good defensive move played my, by my opponent, so. Can definitely give some credits here, because he's finding a lot of very decent moves, okay? Like bishop d7, bishop b5, queen e8. He's definitely trying to hang on. And actually after this move, this is super strong. I don't even have such an obvious plan. So maybe we'll have to just go for the end game, take on f6 and try to pile up on that wiki e6 pawn. I think that's the best thing we could do, but definitely will be very hard to win. That's for sure. So I have to do this and just try to put pressure. Yeah, okay, takes with a knight. I think I can play rook e3. Yeah, I think we could do that move. And then knight g4, just play rook e2. Opponent goes for the f4 pawn. I think we can just uh, protect with g3. That's what I had in mind. And the plan is to just double up and put pressure on e6. We only have one weakness, which is the e6 pawn. So we'll need a second weakness in order to make progress in these kind of lines. So we'll need to start expanding on the queen side, maybe something like a4, a5, and then trying to get our knight into the c5 square. Putting pressure on both pawns. That would be an idea. Just doubling up, hitting the pawn, and okay, when they do knight e4, now this just gives up a free pawn for no absolute reason. He could have still defended passively, but I think would have required quite a bit of technique from us to win that position. But now the problem is that e6 is dropping as well. So down a pawn in a rook endgame is not a disaster, but down two pawns is typically just lost. Can play d5 next he won't be able to take it because uh, of the e8 rook dropping and we're gonna have two extra pawns that are connected passers should be a win in all the end game books that i read at least okay king f7 not really like losing the pawn but allowing a lot of trades after pawn takes we can trade all rooks and we have an extra pawn in the king and pawn endgame and that will just show pretty nicely why you only need an extra pawn to win a chess game but he could also play maybe king g6 and avoid the end game king e7 is worse in view of rook d1 i thought so i'm expecting maybe king g6 but Still e7, we're just like uh, 
completely winning and okay when they take this is similar to resignation there's no way you can hang on into these end games when you're down a pawn so simple rule when you're trying to assess these end games if you're having the extra pawn in a king and pawn end game 99% of the times you're gonna be winning maybe you won't win your games but you're gonna be theoretically winning you can at least think about that and be happy so plan would be to centralize the king start advancing the pawns one by one create a pass pawn on this side sacrifice it go on to the other side win these pawns and then slowly queen that would be how the strategy looks let's see if we can actually show it with some moves that would be even nicer so g5 would be Okay, I mean, everything is bad here, but I think that's losing quite easily to g4, f5. Also losing to pawn takes and h4, because we get the outside passer. I think simplest is just to go g4 and f5 against that. c6, just push the pawns and you can centralize the king. That's usually pretty good. You can go f5, push the far advanced pawn. And after this, you can just go h4, g5. As I was saying, we're going to be doing the little deflection thing pretty soon. And by the way, there's like a funny theme. Definitely quite a bit unnecessary here to play h5 and then g5. Pawn takes and f6. And then we queen. Do you guys want to go for that? So king f7, we have king d6. Kind of don't want to be going for that. Yeah, I think we'll just have to play it this way with g5. That's like the most natural way. I'm just gonna try to keep it as clean as and as simple as I can because as a beginner, you don't really need to go for these kind of fancy things when you could potentially get a queen. You just need to win it the easy and straightforward way just by creating the passed pawn. And yeah, as I was saying, the king will have to stay there, get to take these guys one by one, and eventually queen one of our pawns. That strategy should work all the time that is why basically all the king and pawn end games with an extra pawn are typically an easy win so just take and ready to give up on this pawn because we're gonna be collecting the whole squad here leaving us in a situation with three extra pawns that are waiting to be promoted and okay let's see opponent trying to put on some resistance the problem is that there's no way to protect b6 now and can slowly collect all the pawns there's no way for black to actually save any of them even if let's say they manage to save one still it doesn't matter because we're having just way too many pawns let's get the king to b7 if they allow if not you can just uh start pushing basically get the pawn all the way to c7 we get it to this position you can play c6 and now on king b8, uh, we can do c7. In case they go there, we mate. In the case of uh, king c8, if these pawns were not on the board, that position would have been a draw, because I'm forced to go king c6, and that's a stalemate. But now we can just make a uh, waiting move. It's forced to play king d7, it's only move, and then we can go king b7, promote the pawn, get a new queen, and we're gonna be getting the checkmate very easily i'll also try to show you how to mate without using the pawns so need to cut off the enemy king in sort of like a box and now we just need to come closer with the king let's first of all make sure he has even less squares than normal now we again just sort of keep uh, strengthening this kind of box he's gonna have to go into the corner and now we just need the king around like somewhere here and then just check me with a king i mean with a queen but we need to bring the king around but also just push the pawn and promote with mate but simply bringing the king is fine and yeah now we can play queen f7 and that is gonna be a checkmate so we managed to get this one in Hey everybody, thanks a lot for making it this far into the video and if you're interested to check out the main course, you can click this little thing that will appear on the screen and until that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and take care.